Hello everybody, Reggie Time here and welcome to another episode of Simplified Snap and um, today, uh, well before we talk about what today, because today's session is going to be, or today's video is going to be specific to a subject, but before I say that, before we get into what that's going to be, please don't forget to hit like, share, subscribe, all of those things, join the Facebook group, I'd like to get the Facebook group to a thousand members by Christmas, it's going to be a bit of a tall order, we've got 150 odd members to go, but please, if you haven't already joined the Facebook group, do join, but don't be a dick when you get there, you know, don't just come because you want to spam something, don't come because um, you want to be unpleasant or be toxic, uh, but yeah, if you haven't joined yet, please do come and join and, and get involved, it's, it's a community that's that's growing really nicely more and more people are getting involved so um, a good mix of of new players and um experienced recreational players and it's nice so please do come along and join that but do respect the rules of the group um i'm still always on the lookout for if anyone wants any help with the game some coaching i've got really quite busy with that lately which is a good thing because i'm not going to be too busy in october with my work so i still have room for more and um, if you'd like to get involved please do get involved in them, either add me on Skype, The my Skype address is below the video, email me, contact me via the Facebook group, lots of ways to get in touch, please do that if you even want to just discuss getting sessions with me, exploring how they work and and then whether it's going to be the right thing for you, so yeah, all of those things, as usual, we'll get the spam out of the way, we've not done too bad, done it in just under two minutes, so yeah, what are we going to talk about today? Um, I, Given I've been doing a lot more sessions with people that are new to me lately, it's becoming more and more apparent to me that players post-flop are fumbling around in the dark in so many ways. It, it's like lots of people come to me and they've used hand range charts or they've learned to play at reasonable ranges pre-flop. The, the three or four betting's kind of not always right. Um, but post-flop is, is an area where the vast majority of players that come to me, in fact, all the players that come to me, and myself included, can find huge, huge gains and huge, you know, take a negative win rate to a positive win rate, take a break-even win rate to a really good win rate. Um, yeah, post-flop is, is the weakest part of most players' game by a long, long way for lots of different reasons, but we're going to talk today about planning planning ahead in hands and when we're getting in hands if, if it's if it's if i'm going to be putting money in on any street either by betting raising or calling i'm going to be discussing what i'm looking for on turns and rivers what i'm expecting to happen what i'm going to do if x y or z happens what i'm going to do if like whichever cards come on the board and i'm going to try really hard to to talk about my forward planning because i'm always doing it mentally but i don't always verbalize it on videos and today we're going to try and really really hard to make sure that i'm saying right if this card comes we're doing this and if this happens we're doing this just to explain the kind of thoughts that go through my head and hopefully to alert some of you guys to the fact that you're not doing an awful lot in terms of um planning for later streets in the hand this is where a lot of red line goes it will go because players will play the flop they would not fold to a c but or they will auto c bet certain parts of their range without having a clue on how they're going to proceed versus certain actions on certain turn cards, etc., and river cards. So we're going to try and really, really hard today to to um to verbalise all of my thoughts in terms of planning for future streets, and hopefully that'll it'll help you guys a lot when it comes to what you guys should be thinking about in the same situations. So without further ado, let's play some poker. Come on, dude. Ah, disconnected, fair enough. We're making this session at 10.30 in the AM, so I'm not expecting games to be super splashy at this hour. There's not going to be too many, like, 
working men and women on, especially not from the more western countries due to the times. In the UK it's half ten, means it's around lunchtime in mainland Europe and it's like five in the morning in Canada, so we're gonna be playing mostly against like weak tight Eastern European players here. Let's have a look at the pools breaking down. One Belarusian, one Canadian. Yeah, there's a few UK to be fair, maybe. Maybe we'll get some action because to be frank, UK players are amongst some of the worst in the world. We have some really good players in the UK, but um, we're also a very good source of um, very bad recreational players too. I say we there like I have any kind of sense of national pride, which I don't really. I'm not into nationalism. I think the very concept of patriotism is total bullshit. Um, we're going to three bet the, I don't, it's a big raise, but we're going to three bet the king queen suited anyway. We really don't want to get squeezed behind and we want to isolate a player without 100 big blinds who's using like an unusual raise sizing. We're not going to continue. We're only going to continue. We're going to check back here and only put more money in this pot if we if we improve with like a jack, um, a king or a queen usually. Um, we're going to see about this board pretty big. Two thirds pot. Planning to continue barreling off on safe cards. We're not going to be looking to. Well, we're going to be falling to this race now probably. We weren't going to be looking to barrel on a club. Maybe check back on things like sevens. Um, things like that. What are we gonna do here versus this raise? The problem here with the four planes, we can call this raise here, but then if we're gonna like fold to barrels on later streets, I think we have the, the decision here needs to be. Let's just sit out of this hand while we either call here and then call down on safe runouts or just give up. And I don't like giving up. I think our hand's too strong to give up with. So we're gonna call here. That's not a terrible turn not a great one we didn't you know we we didn't want to see another green one there for sure I, I, I wouldn't have enjoyed seeing another 10 um so here do we want to let me check back here and then just like, call a ton of rivers on cards like this that shouldn't really hit him. And now he bets two blinds. I think we need to raise fold here for value. And um, we can definitely get value here for some 10x that's trying to block bet. Um, I mean, I could absolutely see him have a hand like 10 jack here that didn't improve on the turn and then just like try to block now. If we get jammed on, it's a super trivial fold because we just wouldn't be betting much at this point. And he did fold. So I didn't do a particularly good job there of doing what I said I was going to set out to do at the start of the video. So we'll do it here in the replay. On the flop, we get check raised here. Our hand's too strong to fold on this board texture. He can have lots of draws, jack, queen, eight, seven, flush draws. He can just have a top pair that's check raising to try and protect, etc. He could be like check raising a nine just to like see where he's at. So our hand's way too strong to fold, but it's like, what, what cards are we going to continue on on the turn and which cards aren't we going to continue on? For example, if the turn had come like the Jack of Clubs or the Eight of Clubs, so that would be a dreadful card. And I would be very willing to just give up versus like a very large turn barrel. If the turn was like the Deuce of Diamonds, then I think we'd be kind of obliged to continue because he hasn't changed anything from the flop. He could still have all the same draws and still be like value betting a 10, things like that. So... That was my plan there, like fold on super bad turn cards that complete a lot of his hands and make him a lot of two pairs, make him a lot of straights, make him a lot of flushes and kind of continue on bricks. The queen was, it can certainly improve some of his hands. It improves queen nine, improves queen 10. Um, we have two kings, so king jack really isn't much of a factor here. Jack eight, maybe you could have a hand like jack eight. Not necessarily too many combinations, of course. So it does improve some of his card hands, but it's not as bad as as a green one and this wouldn't be as bad as like a green jack a green eight things like that so then when he checks we can be considered betting there to like get more value from his 10x that doesn't want to like bet a game because he's scared of the queen but at the same time it'd be a nightmare to face a double check raise there if we were to bet say 160 here and he jams 
into Nightmare because um, he can just be doing this with his draws. It puts massive pressure on because he's well, we're crushed by his maid hand range at this point, the double check raises. Uh, but he could do that with some draws too. And all of a sudden, it's just like a huge nightmare. So uh, the, the, like, betting here wouldn't kind of make sense from people who are like, oh, I think the king's the best. I don't want to let draws get there, so I'm going to bet to protect. But if this is someone who plays draws aggressively, it's something you might need to consider because when people check raise flop and check turns in my experience it's a lot of people who were check raising a draw and then for some reason not wanting to barrel the turn or it's people who are check raising a hand like 9x to see if 9x is good you shouldn't do that of course but lots of players will just raise nine, like ace 9 here for example and then just go into showdown mode um 10x might be scared of the queen so um yeah i think there's lots of reasons where people wouldn't join that check raise flop here and then check turn um, and we just don't know enough about this guy to know if he's going for double check raise for value, if he's going for double check raise to draw, or if he's just giving up and we don't know. But I'm comfortable here allowing him a free card and then probably being a little bit, little bit sad when if a green card comes or a jack or an eight or something that makes the four card straight and then having to fold to a bet. But I think here in the, at this point, a little bit of pot control after he check raise the flop. And just seeing some rivers and deciding is a much better plan than just ploughing on betting here because we want to just try and take the hand down or charge his draws and then being faced with the raise. So that was my, my, my plan in there was kind of let's not bet, let's not face a raise because if we do get raised we have to fold and then just get to the river and if, if a bad card comes on the river we just have to be a little bit sad and fold our hand and if a relatively good card comes like it did like the nine it hits his like nine exit check raise the floor. But when he just bets two, I think we have a very safe raise fold. He's either like see bet he's either betting small to try and induce us to raise, but in which case we just fold. Or he's gonna call us with a ten that he kind of thinks we might be bluffing with, because we can have some like missed draws in our range here too. So he's like block betting a ten. He might sometimes convince himself to call and for you guys to think no he wouldn't. Think of how many times you bluffed in spots like this and you've been called by hand, you're like, How the fuck does he call there? Um, it's really important not to allow yourself to like what will happen sometimes what players will do they'll be scared to value raise in spots where they've had bluff called bluffs called before and then they just use whichever rationale suits their suits their reason to not make to, to not raise or to raise and things so that like, people will, be, will hear will be like oh we can't really raise with value because 10x can't call but at the same time, they might not want to bluff here because they might argue Queen X will never call. And you can't have it both ways. If if you wouldn't want to bluff raise here because you're too scared of getting called by a 10 or a Queen, then you should absolutely value raise. And then you can't make the argument we can't raise with value because a 10 never calls. Because you can't have it both ways. If you wouldn't bluff raise here, then you could absolutely value raise and vice versa. completely giving up on this board good check fold if this guy on the bottom bets if he, if nobody bets and we improve on the turn to a queen or a 10 and it checks to us again then we will be making a small bet for value even though this is a really small bet we're just there's nothing which we can do about it we have like no real backdoor equity we have backdoor hearts to a 10 high flush and just two over cards um there's nothing which we can do about this really once we let not to see bet we're just going to be check folding some of the weakest hands that we have there the question here now is we we have to squeeze do we stack off versus either of these players i think we if we elect to squeeze here because we have to make it at least like 14 blinds i would imagine i think we can put 14 blinds in the fold versus this stack size but we can absolutely fold if this guy back raise jammers although it would make me feel quite sad putting 13 blinds in versus two fish and folding ace queen wouldn't make me happy but i think it's the correct play
we're going to see about our gut shot here we are only going to continue on turns that are an eight or a club any other turn we're giving up on if we get when we see that multi way our range is inherently stronger so if we do get called it's it's very likely we're going to be up against either strong draws that aren't going to fold the turn or king x we get raised we're just going to fold well, our continuing range on the turn is clubs and pretty much just an eight maybe a four two because a four would give us an open ender and um, we're just done here now we're just going to check back if he allows us to and hope to spike the river we're not going to do it anymore even if we like the river goes check as well i don't think we're going to be bluffing here too often because once we check back the turn, we weaken our range significantly, which allows our opponent to bluff catches pretty effectively. Although, to be fair, the ace does inspire me to want to bluff. If he checks again here, now I think we can bluff to that, put tons of pressure on his 9x. Maybe you should have said that like, the ace would be one of the only bluff cards. If he does have 7x or 9x, now there's three over cards. We can absolutely play some ace x this way. Ace queen, I would definitely play this way. Ace ten, I would definitely play this way. I wouldn't play queen ten this way. So yeah, I think we are gonna bluff on this card exactly. I just hope he doesn't have like an ace high flush draw, like weak ace high flush draw that's now calling. We're going to go for the set man here and hope to get super lucky. Boo. We do not get super lucky. And super easy check fold. On the ace jack, we're going to see better here, smallish, as we would with most of our range. And we're only going to continue on um, Broadway cards, really. Right, real scare cards. So if it seems like an eight or a seven, something like that, we're not going to barrel on that. Don't think it provides enough of like a scare factor to. I mean, this raise is just nonsense. He should not have a raising range on this board. Uh, really, he he shouldn't want to be raising a six. He shouldn't want to be raising pocket fours. He shouldn't want to be raising small over pairs. Um, yeah, not really sure what he should be raising with here. Um, but anyways, we don't care. We just fold. It's super easy. Maybe we're getting bluff there, but um, I'm really not too bothered about being bluffed off Ace Jack High when facing raises in these games. But the plan was going to be just like um, bet turns on on cards that hit a lot of our range. So any Broadway cards that we can like be stabbing with on the flop. We have Ace Ten there. We have King Queen. We have Queen Jack. So we can we have all the big Broadway cards in our range, and I would have barreled on any of them, but he didn't give us a chance to so fair play to nl fat you really don't want to be doing too much raising on paired boards and um, maybe against fish we can get away with it because fish don't understand how we shouldn't be doing it and they can just put us squarely on like oh you must have a six or whatever but against good players you don't want to be doing it too often because um it's super hard to balance and you don't want to be like raising in spots where you can't be very well balanced against good players because they'll soon catch on and just destroy you. It's a good open size, sir. Bad move. That's, your name is very apt because that certainly is a bad move. Three bet here with the king jack off. Pretty easy fold. Be three bets too small that's like 7.5x i guess we need to defend it but uh, when he goes up to 9x and we only have king jack off position or not re-steal or not i think it's just a sensible fall with the king jack check race here with our gut shot it's a pretty low wish board 
he shouldn't really not he shouldn't hit it but connects with our range more than the buttons range you would imagine so we have some equity and we have we can represent lots of hands here so i think raising is quite appropriate well if we do get called we're only really going to barrel on um some high cards and obviously our good shot so stuff that's going to scare his middle pairs if he does call us he's going to have stuff like pocket fives pocket sixes pocket eights etc so we're going to like double barrel on aces kings queens and then and then um, obviously if we make our straight I mean, if I hadn't seen this dude go all in previously, pre, this would be trivial. I think, still think it is, to be fair, but um, if we do see him going all in with a reasonable frequency in the next five minutes or so, we're going to be, like, pretty willing to call him down, pretty light. I like calling suit reconnected on buttons versus only position, but I think the 4-5 is just a little bit too low. Definitely getting after the limp with an isolation. And we're definitely folding to the limp shove. Just stab one C with our zero showdown value hand just to get him to fold anything. I mean, if he's got, got a hand like Jack seven or something, he's just going to have to fold it when we stab King five, Queen six, stuff like that. Lots of like better hands that I was high carded that have limped the small blind just need to fold there. But if we get called, then we're, we're not going to continue the bluff. Jack ten suited. I think given we potentially have a fish in the blinds, it's okay to call I don't like having much of a calling range out of the small blind, but if I think we're unlikely to get squeezed because I think the big blind's a fish, I think it's fine to call sometimes. Sometimes a fish will come along and give us extra value. Um, or jack juice the pot for us. So yeah, but don't get in the habit of calling from the small blind versus button opens, but if you think the big blind's likely to be loose and passive, then it's fine. We're gonna check race here for sure with our two overs and a, and a flush draw. We're gonna four bet our ace king here and cry call it off to a jam. We're not gonna feel great about it. We're gonna hope he folds. Um, if he calls, then we'll see what the flop brings. If he jams, we're gonna be like, a mm, little bit sad here, but we can't really fold. I expect to run into like aces and kings a lot here, but I mean, he can have some queens, he can have some ace king too, maybe the occasional ace queen, maybe he has jacks as well, and we're flipping tens. Take all of that. For the record, I think four bet jamming tens, big blind versus cut off in these games is absolutely setting money on fire. People just aren't four bet fucking around enough in these games, in my opinion, to justify jamming tens. I think that's quite spewy from our opponent there. Here we're going to continue on um, black cards, jacks, tens, eights, queens, maybe some kings and aces some of the time. Again, potential fish in the blind, so more inclined to want to call with hands like this that have no potential and if he comes along great. So on this flop we have second pair, we have some backdoor uh, back straight draw. We're going to check call once here and if we do not improve on the turn to at least a good shot then we're going to check for most turns unless our opponent bets very small. Uh, 
again we're continuing just with the checking um no reason to bet here not going to get an awful lot of value our hand isn't strong enough to like justify betting for protection And I think we can just check call this river quite comfortably now. And we're still going to lose a lot to this guy who can have some king x and queen x. This guy's got a stack of stronger range than him at this point. But the pot is so damn small and by now he might just be just trying to pick the pot up. I expect to lose a lot of the time here but we need to be right like what? We're getting nearly three to one pods. And the pot's small enough where we can we can justify calling down here. And he did just have a withdraw. Not a great flop for us. I mean, in spots like this, I'm just comfortable getting bluffed off the best hand of reasonable amount. This guy's going to stab this flop a lot. It's dry. And he's going to be stabbing with hands that are worse than ours. But we can't make a plan for the hand. We can't really think about check calling down. If we hit a nine on the turn, you know, big deal. We're going to check call and hope what happens. Hope we turn an ace and then just get to showdown and win. Turn a nine, get to showdown and win. There's not many good things can happen in this hand. I'm just willing to like, I'm willing to be bluffed in this spot and just allow him to take his queen tens and things like that and just allow him to bluff us. Um, he's actually chosen not to see bit. We do hit the ace again. We're just checking with a plan on calling two streets here, and if he doesn't bet. The turn we're going to bet most rivers i mean clear we're going to check and do something here i think we're probably just going to check and call i don't think we can really get called too often by worse for a raise I mean, there's not a reasonable chance he will lose to stuff like ace 10, ace queen, ace king. I, I don't think there's any real value in raising here. Maybe if we raise really small, we can try and get a call from a jack. But I don't think a jack takes this line. Checks back a jack on the flop, then bets it twice on a ace, ace run out. Makes no sense to me. Um, easy call, yeah, he had a better ace. Please squeeze. Come on, Skywalks. You can do it. Never mind. So we have a nice safe flop for our aces. Because we're it's multi-way, we're not gonna go with our usual like smaller pro bet sizing on the flop. We're just gonna kick it off with a much meatier bet straight away. Um because and this is because we shouldn't be see bet bluffing anywhere near with the, with a very high frequency in multi-way pots. So therefore, when we do see bet, we can afford to size up because it's not a spot where we're going to be betting with a high frequency. 10 is a pretty shitty card. Both of these guys can have plenty of 10x in their range. Um, I don't think there's an awful lot of value in betting here. 
if we do want to bet, we want to bet really small. Um, but I think our hand with that ten has turned into a two street hand, so therefore I'm willing to check. I'm not falling to one blind. I think we can raise fold here. I mean, either one of these guys could be doing something stupid with a 10. I don't want to just check here, then check the river. He bets one again, he calls again. It, it kind of all goes fucked up. So I think raise folding is entirely appropriate. Yeah, then he just. I have absolutely no issue with just doing the folding here now. And lots of people will be thinking, why did you raise? You know, you're going to fall to a re raise. But he bet one blind. And um, I want more, well, more value wouldn't be the right way to word it. But yeah, it's a super easy fold. We'll go back and look at that again in a moment. We'll talk about it in more detail. Very easy fold when someone bets eight blinds into three players there yeah so a lot of people look at this and think wow you butchered those aces so let's let's talk about i mean the flop's super it's trivial it's it's just an easy see but ever and um, the plan would be to continue i mean i want to see a lot of low cards here we don't really want to see many jacks queens and um, things like that I'd, I'd, I'd really like to see just like a nice random four five six three come off here maybe even a deuce um, so the turn pairs the 10 both of these players have some 10x in their check calling ranges probably you could argue quite a lot of 10x in the check calling ranges so it's not a great card for us to barrel on um, and I think by checking we can sometimes weaken our range and encourage some people to like bluff not too often I guess but maybe bluff with like a jack queen or something like that or a jack nine or an ace jack or, or like thin value better king i'm not leaving the thin value but just value better king uh, we can just call versus so i think checking here is pretty nice no issue with it but when someone just bets one and then one somebody just calls i think raising is entirely appropriate we can certainly get called by jack queen still we can get called by any turn flush draws we can get called by king x so there's lots of worse hands can call here when it goes one big blind and call I mean, obviously, this guy was doing something funky, probably with a 10, I would imagine. I don't think he's taking this line with a king, not in a million years. So I think he's frequently doing this. He's just turned to 10, and he's, who knows why he's bet 10 in the first place. I don't think he's done it to induce a raise. I don't think like players who bet 10 on this turn aren't crafty and creative enough to do it just to hope somebody like reopens the betting and raises. Maybe they are, maybe I'm doing him a discredit, but um, yeah. I'm not sure why anyone would want to bet 10 here, but we can definitely raise here and get caught by worse king. We talked about king x flush draws, um, jack queen specifically in terms of like their straight draws. Maybe if they're really bad jack nines and ace jacks too. Seems unlikely, but you never know. And then when we get raised, it's just like it's it's a really easy fall by then because it's just so likely that like he's seen his, his 10 pence bet get called. His, it's in me raise. He's raising again, not knowing what this guy's going to do. I just think it's incredibly likely that this dude has a 10 or pocket deuces and not much else. And just, it's so unlikely as a king. He could have one. He could be a dreadful player that's overplaying a king. But versus the pool, we don't know anything about this guy. I've never seen him in my life before. At least I don't think I have. Um, and I'm going to have to just use my pool reads, which is people aren't overplaying just one pair in this situation. And people aren't doing this as a bluff. So I'm just going to put me squarely on on um, trips bet trips or better like trips king ten deuces and just make it like a an irritating but in my opinion very easy fold. But I don't think there's an argument for not raising the turn there when he just bets ten the other person calls. I think we need to raise. The plan was check call versus a normal bet size. But when he bets 10, I think we're kind of obliged to raise there for value. And when we get three bet, okay, we probably don't have the best hand then. So then just, just fold our hand. Like 
is a big three bed. I don't mind the size at all, but it's going to encourage me to fold my jack nine suited. I'm going to be double barreling here on the 889 and then just giving up if we don't improve. You can definitely have some like ace high floats here, queen high floats, maybe some uh, king, maybe not so many king high stuffs. Like queen jacks not not folding here, some ace highs out folding, small pairs out folding, with lots of stuff we can put pressure on the turn. If we get raised, it's a trivially easy fold. So we're not too worried about that. The plan there was double barrel, give up river if we miss, and if he raises at any point, just find a really incredibly easy fold. Don't even need to talk about the eight seven. Future plan is just fold the first time he bets. Given this body is so damn dry, we're just going to go for the one and done C bet. And I hate going for the one and done C bet. It's one of my least favourite lines, but this body is just so dry. And I think we can fire one C, get people to fold a ton of hands, and then just be done with it. If we hit an ace, maybe barrel the turn, but otherwise, no. Let's get the hell out of there. I'm going to double barrel our gut shot here on the A side board. You can call with a 10 on the flop and fold it to future pressure. Now we just have a super easy barrel off with our nuts. We no longer have the nuts here, but I think we can certainly bet pretty big and fold to a raise. I don't think your check raise is straight here on the river. Doesn't check raise a set. You pretty much only check raise is flushes here on the river, so we have a really easy bet. And just hope he calls. Again, situation we likely have the best hand here, or a good chance we have the best hand, but I'm just willing to be bluffed off it because it's just not a good flop for us whatsoever. I mean, we might just show down the best hand here, who knows? No, we don't. I think you should maybe just make a small bet on that river. Because lots of players will just call there with A size and any pair at that point. If he squeezes here, we're just going to fold. It's super rare. People will squeeze me with one call, but not two. His range is going to be so strong here. Uh, both players folded straight away.
fold into a fallback. This guy is such a fucking weak type knit. But I'm presuming he still does have some steals on the button. But because he's so weak and tight, we're going to like, downsize our three bit. Because I think he's going to fold a lot here. And when he doesn't fold, then if he's not folding for 10.6, he's likely not going to fold for 11.6 or 12.6 either. So he calls. We flop the nuts, which is really nice. I'm going to bet big here and just hope he's like smashed that board somehow. He's going to have a lot of high cards in his defending range here and if he just has small pairs then we're not going to get much value anyway so we're going to go really big not worried about him folding pocket eights etc here and that's unfortunate I'm going to bet really big here on this flop. I think it's likely just on a check fold line with two over cards, but we've knit tons of value. Sadly, he just folds, which is to be expected a lot. When people don't see that on those boards, quite often they're just not two over cards that they're not willing to continue with. But we don't want to bet small there and deal with a blue one coming or a card that brings four to a straight, etc. We're not going to bet here versus two opponents, but if the turn checks through, we're probably just going to start bet twice. The plan here is check back because we don't think we're going to have enough fold equity versus two opponents. If the turn's any, well, it doesn't matter what the turn card is. If it checks to us again, then we're probably just going to double barrel. And if someone's trapping us with a nine, then good for them. So we're going to get two streets from us. Super easy bet fold here. And we're going to sit out next plan because we've reached the 45 minute point. Check back here with second pair calling most turns and then folding most rivers so we're going to call here and uh, so we check back call turn and then if he double barrels probably just fold here we're going to just bet once um just to like deny equity to any like jack tens king tens ace jacks things like that continue checking here and then we're going to call any river and we're going to bet I mean we're not going to get called by too many worse hands here but if he does it have like pocket fives or something like that he might just flick a calling given that we haven't really done a good job of repping any strength so far in the hand if he does have like hand like pocket fives here maybe even just some like ace nines and things that just doesn't believe us might just call versus a small bet
so there we go we've reached the end of the video i hope you guys have got something from that in terms of like opening your eyes or opening your mind to how often you're not forward planning and just playing each street as it comes we can't do that as poker players we can't just play each street as it comes you need to be thinking about when you're bluffing which cards you're going to continue bluffing on which cards are good for your range which cards are bad for your opponent's range that you can continue bluffing on you also need to think very strongly about how you're going to respond should your opponent raise when you've got your semi bluffs or when you've got your value hands and you also need to think forwards about which turn cards are bad for you when you've got a value hand on the flop or the turn you need to think about which cards are bad for you on the river and mentally prepare for them so for example you've got an over pair and you bet a wet board and then the turn he leads on a card that like improves his range just get used to like thinking about that right i've got two aces here the board is five six seven with two of a suit if the board comes down any kind of card that connects with you know that doesn't that like it's a nine or a five or a, or whatever just think about what turn cards are bad for you and how you're going to respond if your opponent bets just forward planning on everything what's good for you what's bad for you how am i going to do how am i going to respond to cards that are good for me how am i going to respond to bad cards that are bad for me how am i going to respond if i get raised how am i going to respond if my opponent check calls and leads think about all these things in advance because you're better prepared for them then and if you have a plan just stick to it and it's much less tilting than if you haven't forward planned then something happens that you maybe weren't expecting and then all of a sudden you've got to think about what's going on when you're in a a higher state of stress you're more annoyed by the situation forward planning is going to keep you off tilt it's going to make you play hands better and it's going to keep you calmer when if you expect something to happen or if, if a card comes here that completes a flush or a straight and he bets i'm just going to fold and i'm going to be cool about it it's much easier to do that if you've already planned for it than if it just happens and then oh fuck why has he done that so forward plan is going to keep you calmer it's going to help you play better it's going to help you negotiate your way through hands better and it's just going to make you a better player and if you're not doing much forward planning i would very much recommend you start at least thinking about it and if you're not sure what to think about in those situations then get in touch set up a session i'd be delighted to help you put some of those thought processes in place that you're not capable of of getting to yourself just now so yeah i hope this has been a useful video don't forget comments like shares etc and then um, yeah take care we'll be back with another one really soon bye bye for now